So when we first meet these characters, they're on the edge of the Garden of Eden. Yes. Tell me about what that first encounter is like. This is the first time they've ever met, I mm-hmm. assume. Mm-hmm. And then they spend centuries together. Yeah, and you even have a different name at that point. Yes, that's right. Yeah? Crawley becomes Crowley. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm very, I'm very uh, wary of him because he's a demon. Yeah. Why right. would you not be? Well, they shouldn't get on. I'm the good guy. Yeah, they should be diametrically opposed to each yeah. other. But really, as the centuries progress, they find out they've got much more in common than they have apart. Yes. And that they can help each other out, frankly. And, and all, all they need to do is keep their respective head offices quiet and nobody's yes. really checking up yeah, on them. Exactly. So they begin to enjoy this mortal world and all that it affords. Yeah. And no other supernatural beings know what it's like to be on mm. Earth for that long. It's only them. Right. And they sort of fall in love with, yes. with the world and humanity. Yeah. And their head offices can't understand why they like a glass of wine. Or a <laughs> glass of tea. Right, they don't need yeah. to consume well, things. Uh, no, but... but they find out it's quite pleasurable to do so. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and they're, because they're the only two people who really understand what that is, they become, you know, they become their de facto best friends. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Which is adorable, by the way. Um, I think it's so funny because yeah. you could play like an angel and a demon could come off as such a black and white thing, but there's mm. so many nuances to both of these characters. Like, well, Aziraphale is a good guy, but he's yeah. still. Well, they've sort of blended things. into each other a bit, haven't yeah. they? They've yeah. sort of become some sort of grey area rather than mm. black and white. I think I what think... makes them both appealing is that neither of them are particularly good at their job. <laughs> yes. Right. You know, They're getting away with it, aren't they? Yeah. Really? Just about. I'm not a very good demon. No. <laughs> I'm far too well-meaning. Yeah. And you're not a perfect exactly. angel. When the angel Gabriel, who is my boss, mm-hmm. played by John Hamm, yeah. comes along, you suddenly sort of realise what a terrible angel Because <laughs> <is. laughs> yeah. that's what he's supposed to yeah. look like right. and yeah. be like, and he's sort of not like that anymore. Now, there is a moment in the first episode, I'm not sure if we can talk about this, but part of their plan to mold the Antichrist is to be a presence in his life. Oh, yes, yes. yes. And we see you as a Mary Poppins type figure, David. Yes, indeed. Um, yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that transformation, the song? You sing a lullaby at one point. I do sing a lullaby at one point, which is uh, uh, brilliantly written by David Arnold, who's done all our music. <laughs> mm. yeah. um, Amazing. The music in this the music is, is incredible. glorious. Yeah. yeah. It's, and the lullaby is actually, you hear it in the theme tune of the show. Oh. I do think it's one of the great theme tunes yeah. of all time. It, when you first hear it, you think, well, I've known that all my life. Yeah. And it's yet one of it's <laughs> completely new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I was uh, gifted that wonderful piece, <laughs> which I sing very beautifully. Of I don't, course. I think you'll agree. He manages to be very scary <laughs> and alarmingly attractive <laughs> oh, as a Mary Poppins. Oh, Poppin shush Manny, now. <laughs> which is well, something I could not be accused of as the, the gardener. Yes, Aziraphale goes undercover as the gardener. Yes, which is uh, also an amazing costume. An amazing transformation. Yes, I'm yes. particularly proud of the team. It's your Lawrence Olivier <laughs> moment, isn't it? Is, it? it really yeah. is. <laughs> I see a spin-off. <laughs> Just the gardener and the nanny. Yeah. Um, we also get to see you do a little bit of close-up magic, oh, like yes. sleight of hand. Yeah. Is that actually you doing that? It is, very badly. <laughs> um, it, yes, Aziraphale, there are two things mm-hmm. that make Aziraphale. Aziraphale is quite you know, he's quite stressed out. He gets quite anxious and, and, and alarmed about things quite easily. But there are two things where all his nerves and anxiety disappear. One is doing the gavotte dancing, which we also see later on, and the other is doing magic. He loves it, the idea yes. of doing which is so funny, because the idea of someone who can, who just is magic, right. loves the idea you of doing... You can literally miracle yeah. anything into yeah. being. But he loves doing terrible coin tricks. <laughs> yeah. the, the joy of that, and how much it annoys yeah, Crowley it, as yes, well. Crowley it's finds it infuriating. Yeah. He's like, you want to magic something up? Just magic something up! <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Now, does that translate this. into real life? Because you seem pretty enthusiastic about magic oh, in I general. Do. I love magic. I love magic. I, I am a big fan. I can't yeah. do it. I'm terrible, but I love <laughs> watching it. And I'm such a good audience member for anything, really. I just love watching stuff that's good. And I do love magic very much. Do you, are you a magic fan? I love a magic fan, yeah. I, I am a magic fan, yeah. Mm. When it's done well. Yeah. But yeah. it is one of those things that it's done badly. It's even better. <laughs> <laughs> in a different way. In a very different way, yeah. 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 Was there ever any interest in you playing Crowley and David playing Aziraphale? Or well, we sort of, t- of, we tell the story, don't we, that when, when they do the theatrical tour yes. of this, yes. we'll just swap parts every night. <laughs> we'll alternate. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. would be so much fun. Yeah. And then people would have to come twice. Exactly. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, smart. Yeah. It's a gold mine. And without yeah. giving any spoilers away. Well, be careful, but go gently. There may be 
if you watch the show mm. at some point, an opportunity to see how that might work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I know what you might mean. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Say no more. Had both of you read the books before getting this job, or did you? Know well, I had. I, I read when the book came out. I was at drama school in London, and um, and I, I read the book. I'd written. I'd read a few of um, uh, Neil's. Uh, Sandman comics before mm -hmm. then, so I, I I was a big fan of Neil or so already. So when the book came out, I got it and read it and loved it. So I I am one of those fans nice. who has waited thirty years for this <laughs> to to happen, and um, so being a part of it is both incredibly exciting and very scary because I know how people feel about it because I'm right. one of those people. And for me, it was completely the opposite. My first experience was when the script arrived, and I read this wonderful, glorious script that took me into this bonkers world <laughs> with these extraordinary characters um, and then I read the book and then because I was then involved in the show I then started meeting people who were, who were going you carry my <laughs> dreams in your hands this is the most important book I've ever read this please is, don't crush oh my, my heart gosh. exactly my spirit and whilst that's terribly exciting to be to find yourself mm. in the middle of something that people are so enthusiastic about you it, it, there's a there's a responsibility mm. to that yeah um, which is why having Neil yes. be the one who's done the adaptations right. and the showrunner and be at the Gives heart us of great it. cover yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just blame Neil. Yeah, yeah. But you're no stranger to that being a Doctor Who veteran. Yes, but when I came with, with Doctor Who, I I'd grown up with that show. I was a massive right. fan, so I, I I carried my own dreams then <laughs> at that time. But when you, it, it's almost m more difficult to carry others' dreams because you, yeah. you, it's mm. you're so aware that something means so much to people, and and uh, you want to give them the adaptation they've been dreaming of. Um, now. Can you tease, I know we talked about some of the more fun scenes that are coming up for both of your characters. Can you tease one of the crazy things that we get to see? It kind of starts off pretty bonkers and gets yeah. madder. Yes, yeah. Um, as the world sort of gallops towards the apocalypse, it, mm. it heats up in every <laughs> Literally. sense of that word. Yeah. I mean, having, having watched it, I think one of the uh, most uh, uh, powerful images and sequences is when Crowley, uh, it involves fire and a car, mm. uh, his car, mm. and, uh, and th there are some images in that that I think yeah. uh, will stay with people for a long time. Mm -hmm. 